Jessica Bittner is one of the strongest female athletes powerlifting, not only currently lifting, but also stacks up as number nine in the all-time rankings. Jessica powers into this series with a 220 kilo back squat as a 75 kilo lifter. Now, Jessica's other lifts are nothing to be scoffed at, and most notably, her incredible deadlift definitely deserves a mention, which we will get to at a different time. Jessica stated her goals as a 500 pound back squat and a 600 pound deadlift, which she certainly looks capable of making. Jessica provides us with a useful case study, not only because her squat is a high quality one, but because she is, like others in this series, not incredibly well built for the back squat. She possesses limb lengths that are more akin to a deadlift specialist than a high quality squatter. But once we delve into her squat, hopefully you can use some of these aspects in your own squatting. Now it must be noted that this style of squat is of course geared towards someone who is looking to maximize weights either lifted in competition or in training for the purpose of a larger 1RM max. If we were looking for the best squat for say a sprinter or a jiu jitsu fighter, we would sacrifice the maximum load and use an alternative technique to provide a different stimulus for their sport. The first place we're going to start with is looking at Jessica's upper body mobility and the advantages this gives her in the back squat. Now oftentimes when we're looking at the back squat and its mobility needs, the upper body gets left behind. We usually focus on the hips or the ankles, but we often forget just how important it is to have good upper body mobility, specifically in the shoulders and thoracic spine. So why is this beneficial or necessary to look at? Because in general, the closer we can grip the barbell, the stronger our upper body position will be. This holds true for a couple of different reasons. The first being that the sheer amount of lifter stacked underneath the barbell in a closer unit is greater with the closer grip. If you imagine a mechanical sport holding a weight such as a concrete pillar, the wider and more densely packed this pillar is, the greater the weight it can support. So too in this scenario should our body be also thought of as a pillar. The closer we bring our grip in, the more we are favorably stacking this pillar underneath the barbell. The wider the grip, the less stable we are making our proverbial pillar. The second reason a closer grip can allow us to create a better back squat is it allows us a greater level of upper back muscular contraction. The wider our grip goes, the less we can contract the muscles of our upper back such as our traps, scapula, erectors and so on, as muscles can only contract, aka pull. When we assume this wider grip in the back squat rack position, we are putting these upper back muscles at a disadvantage. We are artificially restricting their ability to contract in a more stable position by adding a wider choke point with our wider grip. When we look at Jessica's rack position, we can see very little distance between her hands and her shoulders even in this deep low bar back position. For many, however, they are unable to achieve this stacked rack position due to the restrictions in their upper body mobility. If you're looking to improve upon your rack position mobility, there are several different areas you'll actually need to look at. This ranges from shoulder internal rotation or external rotation, tricep and bicep soft tissue pliability, pec stiffness and thoracic mobility. It can be quite a complex area to address given the large number of moving parts, but thankfully narrowing down the problem area can be as simple as testing the closest grip you can manage in the back squat with a full grip on the barbell and assessing whether or not you are limited. For example, if you can assume a grip approximately a hand width from your shoulder, you're very likely in a great position mobility wise for the squat. And if you're having issues, it's likely a strength issue that doesn't allow for this closer grip to work rather than a mobility issue. If you find yourself two, three or more hands width away from your shoulder, then you likely have an issue. As you try to move into the problem area, what will happen is the related musculature that's causing the problem will start protesting. For example, if the long head of the tricep is restricted as you assume a closer grip, you will likely experience pain, discomfort or stretching in your tricep. The same holds true for your pecs or your shoulders. Now fixing the area slightly outside the scope of this video, given the wealth of information online, it shouldn't take too long to find the appropriate fix. What is important is you identify the area and correct it. The second area of Jessica's back squat follows the same trends of this biological stacking. As the lifters, we often feel we are in direct control of our bodies. Every movement we make is learned and directly within our remit. This however is not really the case. Our central nervous system dictates a huge amount of the force output, movement compensations and preferred positions. Your central nervous system intakes a large amount of information whether you're doing something or not and one of the ways the CNS receives information from your environment is through mechanoreceptors or rather a subsection of these known as proprioceptors. These receptors sense mechanical or physical input from the outside environment and provide feedback on your body's position, force output, balance and much more. For example, part of your proprioceptor's responsibility is to keep you safe in an unstable environment. 
If you were to attempt the max back squat standing on a balance board, you would not be able to achieve maximal force output due to your body's sensing of an unstable surface, which it inherently recognizes a dangerous surface to apply maximal force on. Were you to attempt this maximum back squat, the chance of grievous bodily harm is high and your body is restricting the amount of force as a safety mechanism. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the more stable environment we operate in, the greater we can maximize our force output. Now, one of the more interesting ways Jessica uses this concept of biological stacking is in the bottom position of her squat. As Jessica uses a low bar rack position, this naturally forces her torso slightly further forward in the standing position in order to support the barbell in the low bar position. As she squats down and she hits her bottom position, she ends up in a position that feels very stable as far as her proprioception is concerned. When she is in this position, her abdominals are extended and are in contact with her upper thigh and hip. This provides a proverbial pneumatic pad for her to press off of from the bottom position, which results in a highly stable position due to the stacking of her body. For Jessica, this works incredibly well due to her toes forward squat stance, which allows her to push her knees forward and still keep her torso within the window of safe forward tilt while still achieving the stacked position. If you were to attempt this stacked position with a high bar squat, you may end up moving outside the safe window of forward torso lean and expose your upper back to flexion or your chest dropping, which will shift the load to the posterior, which is not something we want in the high bar back squat. Whether the stacked position will work for you depends on a number of different aspects, such as your limb length, bar position, use of a belt, abdominal circumference, leg mass, torso strength, and much more. For some lifters, this stacked forward position can be incredibly useful for a stronger competition squat, while for others, the extra stability is outweighed by the unreasonable demands of the torso position. To figure this out for yourself, you need to look for three different aspects. The first being, do you objectively lift more weight, while taking into account the second aspect, which is do you lift more weight with better positions or as equally good positions as before? The third aspect is, does it feel better once you have the first two achieved? Do not use the third without the first two being covered, as how we feel does not always align what's best for us. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you have any suggestions for a lifter you'd like to see, please leave them below. This series is of course brought to you by the Road to Anywhere Squat Program. It is eight weeks in length, two sessions per week. At the end of every first session of the week, it includes insistence work for your squatting. It can fit nicely into other areas of your training. Uh, it is difficult, but very productive.